Hey Sugar Snap. Today I have a basket here that I have just had sitting around that I'd never completed. And I've done the cut process and I'm about to do the tuck process for these steaks. I'm going to do a X lashing rim for this basket. So I'll show you how to set up your rim and do the X lashing as well as tucking in the steaks for this process. As always, check the description below for the tools and materials and let's dive in. First, let's measure out our rim reed so that it can soak in the water and soften up. I have a 5 8 inch wide flat oval reed, so one side's rounded and one side's flat, and I'm going to wrap it around the top of the basket to gauge how much I need, and I'm going to do this twice to cut two lengths. So overlap it by two inches, so overlapping here, and cut that length. So that is one length around, and then we'll use this to measure out a second length and trim this down to that length as well. So we now have an inner and an outer reed, and you can curve these together and put them in your water to soak for several minutes while we finish the cutting and tucking on this basket. Now the first thing to do and most important thing to do in the tucking process is to get everything wet so that the reed is pliable and it won't crack when you bend it. Right now it's dry and so if we tried to bend it over the way we need to, it will just crack off and so you'll end up having to add in a length of, to the stakes in order to fold these over without breaking them off. So I'll go around with my spray bottle and get everything wet. Spray the outside of the basket and then go around. You can tip it over so that you hit the towel and not wherever you're working. And you'll do the inside. And once you've gotten it all wet, allow it to sit for about a minute for the water to soak in and then it will be pliable enough to work with. Now the cut and tuck process is where you cut any stake that is behind the top weaver. So this is the top weaver here. And I've already gone through and trimmed these ones that are behind down so that they are hidden behind that top weaver. And then go around and fold over all of the rest of the stakes so that they're folded down into the basket like so. And these I've already pre folded as well. So we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to trim them down to the length of the row inside the basket that we want to tuck them behind. So you'll fold it down like so, and then trim it down. And this one looks good, looks short enough. So I'm going to put my packer into this space um, against the stake between the stake and the weavers, and then fold this stake in and underneath those weavers so that it's tucked and hidden behind those weavers and held in place. If you like basket weaving and you want to see more basket weaving videos, give this video a thumbs up. After your stakes are all tucked in, we're ready to prep the rim. To prep your rim, you want a box knife and pull your rim pieces out of the water and tap them off. And we're going to trim down one end of each of these lengths so that it's about the thickness of a flat reed. So take about an inch and a half of the length off so we're trimming it down so that when we layer the two together, we're going to butt these ends together like so, and we want it to be about just a little bit thicker than the two reeds. If we stack the two reeds without trimming, we're gonna get a lot of bulk and we want to trim some of that bulk away, which is why we trim down some of this width. And if you trim it down too much, you can just extend it a little bit back, depending on how much excess you left yourself and I'll trim this down a bit. Okay, so that's one piece. Now do the same thing on one end of your other piece. Now our rim pieces are ready. You can pull up your basket and we'll start attaching these to the, to the top. To start your rim, attach the carved downside to one side of your basket and clamp that end in place. 
And I'm using the plastic clamps because they have a nice space that holds the rim in place without causing creases in, in the reed. And now we'll go around the basket holding the rim close to the wall of the basket and clamping every once in a while. So I'm gonna clamp on every corner and on every side. And we'll go over the rim or the handle there. Wrap it around here. There. And then where it overlaps, you're gonna trim down to where you trim, so the length that you trim down with the carving knife or the box knife will cut to that length. And then I like to trim down the corners of this reed so it's a little bit rounded. And then put the clamp over all of that, like so. And I'm gonna add a clamp here because it wants to move. And then your inner rim will go inside the basket. You will want to train your reed to rotate in. You're going to be folding it opposite of the way it naturally wants to bend. So curving it around in that opposite direction will help to train it into the shape you want it to go. So I'll set this car carved down section onto the opposite side of where I started the outer rim. So started here and I'm starting here. And then curving it around into the basket, moving the clamps and replacing the clamps as I press this against the inside of the basket. And then push it under and through the handle. Like so. And then trim down, overlapping where what you trimmed earlier and trim down your corners. And now we'll put the seagrass into the space between the two rim. So pull out a length of seagrass and we'll put it on either side of the handle. So I'm gonna butt this up against the handle here and clamp it in place with the reed, the rim reed, and then guide it around into the space between the two rim reeds all the way around. And then leaving a little bit of excess, I'm going to trim this up against this handle, leaving a little bit of excess so that if you are lashing and you end up having not enough, you can just adjust it. If you trim it and you end up with too little, that's harder to adjust. You can always trim pieces off. You can't add pieces to it. And again, we'll trim this just outside the handle. And now we're ready for the lashing. Grab some quarter inch flat oval reed and allow it to soak in your bin for about a minute. And then we'll come back and start the lashing. Okay, for X lashing, you're going to do a basic lashing around the basket rim and then go back and do the same thing in the opposite direction, creating X's over the rim. Now, because of how much reed you need, you might need to splice new reed in as you're working, but typically you'll want about five wraps around the basket if you're trying to do one length of the lashing reed. So wrap it around your basket five times to have enough for X lashing. My piece is smaller, so I'll be adding in new pieces as I go to complete the lashing. So you'll start between two stakes. So I'm gonna start right here between this stake and this stake, and I'm going to go in between the inner rim and the basket and press my length of flat oval reed in with the rounded side facing up, and then bring this around, loop it, and thread it back through. So we're creating a loop around the inner rim. Pull tight and that is our starting knot. So now we're going to work in between each set of stakes. So putting a stitch underneath that first row of weaving between each set of stakes. So between the stake, this stake and this stake right here. 
the orientation of your lashing reed is important because you want to pull it through and have it go around the rim flat so that it doesn't get twisted and that will cause it to break and to look not as neat and tidy. So you're going to thread it through your hand by holding the rounded side against your thumb and pulling the length through your hand to maintain that orientation and then grip it with your non-dominant hand while you create a space between the next two stakes. So we have that knot here between these stakes. We're gonna create a space for the lashing to go between these next two stakes and then thread the lashing into that space and then pull all the way through. This is sandwiching all the layers of the basket together to hold everything together. And you can pull tight to hold the stitch nice and tight and in place. Loop this around, again, making sure that rounded side stays on the outside and your thumb holds the rounded side facing up and we'll thread it through our fingers. And I'll move, you can move clamps as you go if they get in your way. And then create a space in between the next two stakes thread this through and you want your stitches to be tight because the lashing and all the reeds will shrink slightly once everything has dried so make sure that you pull tight without pulling so tight that you break the lashing reed so create a space underneath this top weaver so the top weaver is under the rim reed here and we're going to create a space between these two stakes and then bring the lashing reed around, tuck this through, and pull the length all the way through that space, and then pull tight. And I have a weak spot in my lashing reed right here, so I'm going to cut it here and loop it into the basket between the basket and the inner rim, just like we did that starting knot. I'm gonna loop it in place to create a finishing knot and then trim down the inner inside of the length so it's tucked in the basket. And now I'll use the rest of this length. I'll just check it to make sure it doesn't have any more weak spots. And then I'll do the same thing that I did when I started with that starting loop right next to where I ended, bring it in, loop it around, tuck it back in, and that will hold it in place. Okay, and then continue on as you did before. And when you come to your overlaps, so here I'm coming to the overlap of the inner rim, I'm going to uh, just adjust the clamp so that it holds everything in place and then make sure that I catch the rim overlap in a stitch. Like so. And then we're going to go over this handle as if it was a stake. So we'll treat it just like we would another stake by going over it. If you start to feel that your basket is becoming dry or the rim reed is becoming dry, give it a good spray down so that everything stays damp. When you've come back to where you started, make sure you hit that last space. So every space between stakes is, has a whip stitch in it. And then we're going to 
circle back and go the opposite direction. So the same process, we're just going to make sure that we now have two loops in every stake. So we did a, a stitch right in this space last, so we're gonna circle back and go back into this space. So there's two stitches in that space and overlap these pieces of the lashing so that it creates an X shape. Pull tight and there's your X, like so. And then we'll create another stitch next to that. When you come to the handle, do your stitch over the handle and then continue coming from, so we went around through here and now we're coming up from underneath and we're going to do a stitch in the next space, butting this edge right against the handle, just like you normally would, but the handle can kind of sometimes throw you off if you're not paying attention. So you end up with X's all the way along here. And whenever you need to add a new length in, go ahead and create that loop, tuck it back in. It'll be harder because you've pulled everything so tight that you have to work it into that space. And then pull it in and trim it down. And then in the same space, we'll start another length. Okay, when you've come to your last stitches, just continue making sure that you create an X with each lashing. We have one more stitch here. And there we've gone all the way around twice to create the X lashing all the way around the top. And we'll do our final loop stitch Loop around by cutting off some of the length so we have just enough to work with, creating a space between so that we can fold this over and back into the basket. Loop it around and pull tight. And then we'll trim that down in the basket so that we just have a little bit of a tail in there. There's a lot of little hairs around the basket. You can go in and trim those down so that they're not sticking out. Trim down any extra length you want. Just clean it up a bit. Trimming down is, is the best way that I know to clean up the hairs off of the rattan reed. And also when you choose the reed that you use, choose a reed that isn't splintering or doesn't have a lot of hairs already. They'll just become worse, especially as you're lashing. They'll, you'll see some breaking off, some of a little bit of splitting if you use a lesser quality reed. So there is X lashing a rim. The next step will be to allow this to dry overnight so that the thickness of the rim all layers can dry through. And then I suggest staining and sealing your basket. Check out this video here all about how to do that to protect it from mold. Also sign the bottom of your basket to sign and date it with your name and the today's date. Kind of like an artist signs their painting, a basket weaver signs their basket. Thanks for watching how to X lash a basket rim. Like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to my channel for more basket weaving, natural dyeing and other fiber art videos. I would love to have you join the textile indie community. Check the links in the description below. There's links to my basket weaving courses. I have a course on weaving this specific basket as well as a couple others and you can find the resources and tools for doing this process as well as lots of other goodies down there. So check that out and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for weaving with me.